but our young student's happiness was to be short-lived. Mimi is dying of tuberculosis. The simplicity of their first meeting is echoed perfectly in Mimi's tragic demise. One of the great Puccini interpreters is the soprano Renata Scotto. She has not only sung the role of Mimi, but almost every one of Puccini's heroines in the world's major opera houses. Her recordings are a benchmark for performers and listeners alike. Perhaps one of the most poignant parts of La Boheme is Mimi's death. We know it's coming. We know it's coming maybe even from the very beginning. It's the most beautiful, the most emotional moment in any Puccini's opera, I think. It's the most beautiful ending because it doesn't end loud. It doesn't, it doesn't end, end, you know, melodramatic. Uh, melodramatic. You know, and like she, she disappears, she goes. And the words are fantastic. I cry all the time when I hear this ending. For me, the, the silence before her actual death. That gets me every time, yeah. that one. She's gone. Gone, but in the silence, with that chord. Nobody's moving, nobody does anything. I think it's, this is pure theater that gets the audience. You cannot keep your eyes dry. You can't, you have to cry. <laughs> Puccini premiered La Boheme in 1896 to mix reviews. One critic wrote, Just as it left no impression on the minds of the listeners, La Boheme will not leave much of a mark on the history of our lyric theatre. How wrong can you be? Today, La Boheme is one of the most famous and frequently performed operas in the whole repertoire. To find out where Puccini's prodigious musical talent was first nurtured, I've come to his hometown of Lucca in northern Tuscany. During the Middle Ages, this city was known as the most serene republic of Lucca. It was famous for its silks and its textiles, but for centuries it also boasted a strong tradition of sacred music. This tradition was kept alive from the mid-18th century by the overwhelming presence of one family five generations of the Puccinis. Puccini's father was director of the city's music institute and led the musical life of Lucca. Puccini was only five years old when his father died and his funeral oration made it clear what was expected of young Giacomo. The city should and must turn the post of organist and maestro di cappella to Signor Giacomo as soon as he is able to discharge his duties. The poor boy had his future mapped out for him. Puccini embarked on a rigorous musical education and showed signs of real flair on the keyboard and at composition. But on reaching his teens, he became the family's main breadwinner, earning money by playing for church services. This is the church of San Pietro Somaldi, where Puccini's father and great-grandfather before him played the organ. All the signs pointed to Puccini carrying on the family tradition.
But then one event was to change the course of Puccini's life forever. One evening, he and a group of friends walked from Lucca to Pisa, about 20 miles away, to see a performance of Giuseppe Verdi's opera, Aida. It was a theatrical event that just blew him away. In fact, later, Puccini was to state that it was as if a window, a new musical window, had been opened to him. But it was not just the music, it was the sense of place. Aida's Egyptian setting is part of its very identity, and this was to be true of all Puccini's operas as well. Perhaps the best example is next, Tosca. This shocking thriller includes torture, attempted rape, assassination, execution, and suicide. And it is set right here in the heart of Italy, in the heart of Rome. Tosca. Tosca is an intense tale of lust and political manipulation, set in a Rome under the oppressive regime of the head of the secret police, Baron Scarpia. Tosca is Puccini's bloodletting opera. The music is both dramatic and powerful and tightly wound around the action. The opera is set over the course of one momentous day in Italian history, the 14th of June, 1800, the day Napoleon invaded, and this is the backdrop for the unfolding drama. Here, time and place are as important as the characters, and Tosca is set in iconic locations around the city. This is the Palazzo Farnese, one of the most imposing palaces of the 16th century, and now the French Embassy in Rome. The whole of the second act of Tosca is set in one of its rooms.